So good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Greg Kennedy. And uh, this meeting was originally to help introduce our mentors from the American Council of Engineering Companies of Colorado uh, Education Foundation to help their mentors prepare for a really cool collaboration that we're gonna do with schools from around Colorado. And uh, absolutely love the problem statement of how do we build the infrastructure to support self-driving cars that serve the diverse needs of rural and urban communities. Um, but anyway, um, mentorship can be um, a little scary <laughs> for people. And you know, when you're in the schools and you're a teacher, you're used to dealing with uh, K through 12 students. But um, then when you're an industry professional and you're, and you're asked to come mentor some students for a collaboration like this, um, that might be a little scary or you might just wonder what your role is. And I, I think um, tonight's gonna be great because we're gonna have um, some suggestions for what the role could be. <laughs> On purpose, I think our educational team does not really want to tell industry professionals what to do. <laughs> you guys are the experts. And uh, all of these collaborations that I've been involved in, I just learn along right with the students. And I'm telling you, um, every one of them um, are miracles. And I'm going to show just briefly, uh, we have Dr. Matula, and I will introduce her here in just a second, but she was one of the mentors on this project that has inspired so many things called Martian Greenhouse. And I tell everybody that it was literally like watching miracles. Um, and, and the miracles happened because these industry professionals listened to the students and, and had this to me, it seemed like a simple relationship, but it was so meaningful. It literally, the, uh, you know, Consuelo is from Belize. She's on this meeting. Consuelo, I will remember you telling me that, you know, um, our students will never be the same. Our teachers will never teach the same. I mean, and then the same thing has happened for me here in Colorado. Um, I watch how these industry professionals work with students and I have a brand new vision of what learning can be. Um, you know, it's way beyond my training as a teacher. And I've taught for a lot of years and still time after time, it's incredible. But this is an example of uh, the excitement of, of uh, one of the teams from Belize that went from uh, another grand problem. How do you grow plants on Mars? <laughs> That's pretty grand, um, you know, to the solutions they found for that were incredible. Here's a, just a little taste. This is our underground portion of the dome. And not gonna lie, it's my favorite part. We'd have the RTGs on the top layer and the food storage at the bottom. This is because we didn't want the heat from the RTGs to warm up the food in the food storage since we wanted to take advantage of the Martian temperature to freeze our food for later use. And working on this project for the past two months, we expanded our knowledge on science, like learning about Mars and how it's different from Earth, engineering because we had to find how we could have our dome withstand radiation and temperature of Mars and about technology. And you know we had several teams from Belize, we had a team from the UK, um, we had teams from uh, Colorado and um, many of them are still, this project, this collaboration ended in November but many of them are still building hydroponics and aquaponics and aeroponics and things like that and um, this is one more little sample that I absolutely love to think that an all girls team from Belize has this solution. And I'm telling you what, <laughs> it's just amazing. And uh, these students presented for AIAA's uh, Ascend Conference. And um, we were hearing that their products are, are right there with what university students are doing after just a short time. Here's just uh, 20 seconds of, of this project from uh, a team in Belize. Here we have our prototype, well, our um, animation of our greenhouse. Our plants will be stored in rings around a cone-like column and around the greenhouse walls. Water will be distributed from the cone-like column, which is also our water container, through pipes under the rings. Water that condenses from the soil will drip and fall into the outer columns. And so now you've seen some miracles too. And uh, that's why we're here tonight. We do have a document we're putting together 
and I'll put it maybe a link in the chat, but it's right now a very rough draft of ideas. Dr. Matula has a lot of ideas that she's thrown in here. Others have chimed in as well. Uh, we hope that maybe even out of this meeting, uh, if you want to put stuff in the chat of suggestions that we could add to this or if something comes out of this meeting, um, we're going to put it in here and build out these best practices for these kind of mentorships. Lastly, um, this is... Um, so there's sort of a framework. Mentorship is so broad, isn't it? You can be a lifelong mentor for somebody. You can be a, a, a mentor for certain careers where it's very intense. And there's a lot of things you do to prepare your mentee for the profession. In this case, we're talking about mentorship for collaborative learning adventures for, for K through 12 students. And most of our um, Collaborations have been middle school and high school, and in the case of ACEC's um, engineering collaboration, that will be middle school, and we might have a little bit of high school in there too. But, you know, we, we come up with this basic framework, and, and the goal is to preserve the autonomy of, of the working professionals, make it really fun and meaningful for our industry experts. So like Dr. Matula, they want to come back, <laughs> they, and we're so happy that she's coming back, and uh and, and so we hope there's joy and meaning for the mentors just as much for the students. And then also uh, there's a philosophy that this is tied to that's very dear to my heart that I work on too. And just the mission of, um, and, and this is urgent by the way, this is urgent. Our students are not being connected to the infinite opportunities to thrive in their future. We're missing the mark. And I don't think that teachers and parents can solve that or schools without the help of mentors from industry. I really don't believe they can. And then you think about how many amazing uh, subject matter experts and industry professionals there are um, in the world. Each one of them changes the life of a student. So that's what we, we want to see is more mentorship and have people not afraid to do it so that more and more students can uh, experience the miracles that you saw. We're inviting industry, community businesses to joining us in making sure that every um, student has the kind of ships and ships are like relationships, um, primarily friendships um, that promote kindness. Readiness for future careers is important and a passion for infinite op opportunities. So that's my part here tonight. Dr. Matula was one of our mentors on the Martian Greenhouse. And uh, I was so excited when she agreed to mentor our uh, Martian Greenhouse students. I'm skipping around my office saying, we have somebody who trains astronauts <laughs> who's going to be working with our students. Isn't this incredible? And then I, I was able to sit in on a lot of her sessions with the students. And oh my goodness, um, I took notes and I'm still learning. And I'm <laughs> there's so much that the education profession can learn from Dr. Matula and, um, and then hopefully uh, other, other mentors. I call her the mentor of mentors. <laughs> and so that's my introduction, Dr. Matula. I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this.